The power of life and death are in the tongue. We are called to prophesy life. Join us as we share prophetic insight. And those who have insight will shine like the glow of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Join us now for an episode of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Welcome to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Daniel 12, 3 is our overarching theme verse for this entire television show because we want to be among those and we want you to be numbered among those who are going to shine brightly as the expanse of heaven and lead many to righteousness. We're on a new series right now on the prophet, on prophesying life. By the way, we are not doomsday prophetic people. We believe in declaring and prophesying life to the broken, fragmented structures of life, whether it's society, governmental, or how about families, or how about an individual person? So, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time, and that you are going to reach forth with your hand, and you are going to touch people right now through iPads, Mm -hmm. through computer screens, and through television sets, and maybe through a smartphone, through digital devices, all around the world for such a time as this. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do, the finger of God. And we're grateful and we're thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. So Rachel, what is our theme verse for this episode, this show on Prophesy Life? Yeah. So our theme verse comes from Numbers 11.29, which says, Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put His Spirit upon them. And, you know, even now I feel like there's an invitation Mm -hmm. for people to open up your spirit. Just even like, you know, uh, this might be like overly simple, Mm -hmm. but... You know, this is a posture of your heart that we take. We go, Lord, we put out our hands and we receive. We say, Lord, we hey, open that's, up. I, I, but let's let them, it's, it's, this is an invitation yeah. already that Rachel's giving. And you might have missed that as though she's the only the one who's doing it. Put your hands out yeah. because we are hungry yes. now. And dad, you were saying the finger of God. So even now I feel like there is the finger of God coming upon people's lives and you can feel the tangible presence of the finger of God coming upon you in your room. I can see someone like it sitting Uh, in your bedroom on your bed and you can um, almost see like a glitter in your room Mm. and um, (laughs) there's like a glory realm coming upon you in your room and God wants Mm. to touch you and he wants to open up your eyes so that you might be one that gets God. God's perspective and you can minister and see from God's perspective, which is out of um, the Lord, out of uh, love. It's out of seeing what we, we've talked about, seeing as Jesus sees as um, love. And so as we move forward into prophesying life, we get a revelation of your love for us so that uh, we can prophesy life. Right, right now, I've only had this happen maybe three or four times before. Mm. And this is when a seer realm in the prophetic really opened up to me. Uh, Many years ago, I was awakened four or five nights in a row at 2 a.m. And I went out and I sat down in a chair. 
and presence came down. Mm -hmm. And right now, hold your hands out because presence, mm -hmm. gifts are coming down mm -hmm. right now. And say, well, this is an odd way for you guys to open. Yeah. Oh, it's a great way to open. Yeah. Because gifts are coming down right Come now. On. Book of James says, every good and perfect gift comes down. Mm -hmm. Oh, they come down. Uh huh. James chapter one. Mm -hmm. Every gift, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, receive right now. Because it's present time. I love giving presents, by the way. And guess what? God loves giving gifts. Mm -hmm. Gifts are coming down right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what happened for me? A gift would come down wrapped in a box mm -hmm. with foil. And it's coming down right now for you. And it would be like in green foil, wrapped in red ribbon. But I would have to unwrap it. You've got a gift that's just come down. But it's up to you to unwrap it. And I would unwrap it at 2 a.m. in the morning. And then I'd have to do what? Take, unwrap the ribbon, undo the paper. No, keep your hands out. Guys, you've got a gift in your hands right now. I rarely do this, mm -hmm. but then you have to take the lid off. Mm -hmm. take, we're doing a prophetic act right now, by the mm -hmm. way. Take the lid off. That's a big statement. You have to take the lid off of your imagination, self-limitation. Take the lid off. Mm -hmm. And you know what I then did? I reached down inside that box by faith. You know what was inside there? I pulled it out, and there was a glass eye. Whoa, that was weird. And I had to already been seeing and able to see that. But I reached out, and I put it in. I put it in. And I saw in a different realm. Mm -hmm. And right now, you might not be getting eyes to see. Mm -hmm. You might be getting a gift of faith. You might be getting a gift of reconciliation in a relationship. You might be getting a gift of helps. I feel I feel a gift of healing in my Come hands on, there right you go. now. There you go. Um, and that there are people. Uh, not just actually for people to experience healing in their bodies, but actually for you to minister yeah. in healing. There's an anointing of healing. So right now we release that yes. anointing of healing over you right now. In Jesus name. There's a gift of discerning of spirits. That's for someone. It's for you. But remember, the gifts of a spirit aren't just about how much God loves you. They're about how much God wants to love others through yes, you. Yes, which is prophesying life yes. into them, which is what this yes. whole episode is about, about prophesying life, because yes. our gifts are meant to glorify God and minister to others. Now, receive your gift, yeah. because every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father, and it's by grace. You didn't earn this. That's why I love giving gifts, because isn't Santa Claus or He's not in nice making the list. You're not in nice. Uh uh. You were getting gifts out of unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. Receive a gift right now. Yeah. Oh, he's that good. He really is about prophesying life for such a time. As, as Moses said, oh, would it be that all yeah. of my people were prophets? Well, stay tuned because we're going to share um, an example of prophesying life and a cancer testimony of someone being healed. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to find out more about James Gall and his ministry. Read his latest articles. 
grow in your relationship with God. Enjoy James Gall's poignant articles that will inspire you and give you deep insight from heaven itself. Enroll in his powerful classes. Grow in your relationship with God. Access hundreds of free audio and video messages ready to revitalize you and give you hope. You will have access on demand. Check out his resource store. Cultivate revelation in your walk of faith. These dynamic resources will equip you and light your spiritual fire. You will find that these dynamic resources will teach you how to walk in the supernatural every day. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to access James Gall's website. And now back to Seeking Insight. Hey guys, welcome back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. He's my dad and I'm his youngest daughter. Uh, it's so fun to get to do this with you. We just had a really, yeah, really good. surprising time <laughs> of kind of activating um, a prophetic gift, yeah. seeing in the prophetic and getting to just share that with you guys. It's an honor to get to have you yes, on here with it us. Is, it is. Thank you yeah, for being on here. That's right. Thank you. There, um, we wanted to talk about a little bit, you know, there's the power of life and death in the tongue. Yes. And a little bit, we're actually going to share a testimony of someone who is, got healed from cancer by speaking by speaking life. life. So, but before we do that, we wanted to kind of, <sighs> you know, break down. I'm all about demystifying yeah. what things mean in the supernatural, yeah. what giftings mean, make it practical. Yeah. So dad, you know, we talked a lot about like, there's the four different categories in the prophetic. Right. I would love for you to share. Yeah. So hang on just for a moment. I have this book and this study guide. And so we have a special bonus materials, a special bundle of the prophetic. And this is a classic modern day book of the prophet on creating and sustaining a life-giving prophetic culture, and then the accompanying study guide. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm just going to be able to touch this material right now, but it is written out thoroughly in this book and in the study guide and in the four message, uh, the best of the prophet that you could get in this uh, prophet uh, bundle. Now, so there's at least these four identifiable uh, different categories. A spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the ministry of prophecy, and then there's another category, the office of a prophet. And would it have been when I started out in this, because I have been actually moving in a gift of prophecy for over 48 years. Mm -hmm. But there was not clear delineation in these realms mm -hmm. in that period of time at all. So the spirit of prophecy, and this alone still needs better teaching and clarification. There can be a dimension of where's the manifest presence of God and the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes. And in that setting, anyone can prophesy. Mm -hmm. Anyone, and anyone can hear God for themselves. And it's the spirit of prophecy. And it can actually worship, worshiping God, singing in the spirit and all that, that has a lot to do with this dimension. But there is a spirit of prophecy. And there we could unwrap, unfold, and I have another chapter in that book on the seven spirits of God. So let's just say that there is a, an arena that is beyond gifts, and it's the spirit of prophecy. Then there is the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. The gift of prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it's for edification, mm -hmm. that means to build up, exhortation, which is encouragement, and consolation or comfort. But let's be clear, that scripture on the gift of prophecy does not include correction or direction. And a lot of people are out there who are supposed to only be, they, they just, they, are, okay, they have a wonderful gift of prophecy, 
but because they are not under proper teaching, they move way outside of their umbrella or their right. sphere, and they're trying to give words of direction, they're releasing words of judgment, and the gift of prophecy is to build up, edify, it's to bring comfort and encouragement. And something that I've always known or been like yes. heard is, you know, in that setting, yes. no mates, dates, or babies is yeah. kind of the old timey like. And that's the gift of prophecy. Yes. Yeah. That's the gift yeah. of prophecy. And then I think that's a good distinction, though, to uh, yes, add. Yes, it is. You hear that, and if you don't know there's four different categories, then you're going to think, well, why are they an office of a prophet, da, 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 you know? Yeah. Now, then there's the ministry of prophecy, and that is referenced in Romans chapter 12. And in 1 Peter, I can't remember right now, maybe it's chapter 4. I'd have to look it up. I've written a lot on these things, by the way. Okay, so, spirit of prophecy, gift of prophecy. Then there is... See, a gift of prophecy might be occasional. It might come upon a person, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily always consistent. Mm -hmm. But then there's a ministry of prophecy. A ministry of prophecy is consistent. Mm. And I'm going to use the word, it's residential. Mm. It's residential. You are consistent in it, and it's residential. Residential, it is abiding in you, and you are abiding in it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have been, you might be called, mm -hmm. and then there's training, mm -hmm. and then there's commissioning. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean necessarily you have been commissioned as a five-fold ministry office prophet yet. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a difference. So, spirit of prophecy, gift of prophecy, ministry of prophecy. I believe I functioned in a gift of prophecy with a calling to be a prophet. And then I moved in many years in the ministry of prophecy, called unto to be a prophet. Then there was a point in time I didn't call myself, but I literally got commissioned by apostles mm -hmm. as a prophet. Mm -hmm because I bore the fruit, mm -hmm. and it was recognized by others, mm -hmm. and I had hands laid on me and was commissioned, not just as a pastor, but as a prophet. And then as in the office of a prophet, it includes its governmental in the church. Mm -hmm. And it could also include correction and direction, and it is governmental. But I also want to include this. I don't know that you are a true prophet unless you are an equipper, because Ephesians 4 says, God gave some, some, not everyone is a pastor, not everyone is, is an evangelist, a teacher, an apostle, or a prophet. God gave some. So if you are a prophet, you must be an equipper to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. So if you are a prophet, you are set aside to be an equipper to teach others to do what you do. And if you are not equipping, then you have a ministry of prophecy. I don't know if you're actually a prophet yet. Well, you just dropped the mic. Yeah, you know, well, I do that every now and then. We're going to come back yeah. with a dish. We're going to share about speaking life. Yeah. Um, and about a testimony of someone being healed from cancer. Yeah. And we can't wait to get that to you, so stay tuned. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com to get his powerful and life-changing resources. You know, something that I love is the prophetic. Yeah. It's an area that I grew up in mm -hmm. and you've actually done um, a ton of teaching, a ton of writing on this subject, including your book called The Prophet, mm -hmm. which is about creating and sustaining a life-giving culture. Yeah. Because we need, we, need, um, we need to not just create it, but we need to sustain what we've created, that's right? right? That's one of the distinctions that's about this book. The publishing company turned to me and they said, James, you're a good writer. But could you consider writing a book that could be a modern-day classic? 
And they said, would you pray about it? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, no. I said, the answer is yes. <laughs> I said, I've prayed about it for a long time. I said, yes, I can do that. And I did. There's not only the book, there's the Compliment Study Guide. So that guess what? You can not only do this yourself, but mm -hmm. then you could end up hosting a group in your home. Mm -hmm. How outrageous would that be? And again, there's a free bonus. The free bonus is the best of the prophet, where I take four of my best messages in a four CD message set. Oh, in here, I teach you the difference between the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the ministry of prophecy, and there is a difference on the office of a prophet. The total value on this one is $62, but the total offer is $38 for this TV show. Where do you get it? At jamesgall.com or God Encounters. Dot com, where God encounters are for everyone. To get these resources, call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com. And now back to Seeking Insight. Hey guys, welcome back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Today we are talking about prophesying life because the power of life and death is in the tongue. That's right. As Proverbs 18.21 says. And so Dad, I know you've had this yeah. encounter uh -huh. where, I mean, I don't even want to give it away. It's such a great testimony yeah. and I want you to go ahead and jump in and yeah. share it. Hey, in Ezekiel 37, it's about the Valley of Dry Bones. And Ezekiel is told by the Holy Spirit to speak to the broken, fragmented structures. I could say of society, I could say of Israel, but we could say just of a skeleton and to prophesy life. Yeah, come on. That's where I learned this. And I can develop this in a historical setting but I'm going to develop it right now out of a testimonial setting. I was ministering one time in New England, and I was at a church that was, uh, eh, it wasn't in a real good condition at the time. Let's just leave it there. It was on, I kind of think, close to life support. And, but I was called to minister there. And then I was doing one of my Mary of Bethany type messages, and people were up at the front, and they were truly seeking God. But the church had really dwindled down in size to maybe only around 40 people or so. And, but they were hungry for God. And I, the Lord illuminated Ezekiel 37, prophesy life, prophesy life. But I didn't have any distinct words of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So all I started doing, oh, I don't know what to do right now. I got to stand up. So cameras, get ready. I just have to do this. So I got up and I just started laying hands randomly on people, just moving around. And I was like, and all I'm doing is this. The power is, is life is in the tongue. I just said, blessing, life. Blessing, life, blessing, life. And I ended up, I kind of got stuck on this one person. And I just go, life, life. And I just started sobbing over this person. And I went, life, the Lord says, life, you will live and not die. Blessing, life. I didn't know what went on, but I knew something exploded in me. Mm -hmm. And I was just declaring life. A year later, I'm back. This whole church was in a different climate. Yeah. It was a different zone. The whole thing was almost like it had been raised from the dead. And it was now flourishing. Yeah. And then this woman that I had, I didn't prophesy to her. I didn't think so. I didn't say be healed. I didn't know anything. Well, she gives me a family heirloom picture of Mary Bethany. And then they tell a testimony that she had stage four cancer and she was diagnosed mm. to die quickly. Oh, and then, and then, <laughs> then she actually showed x-rays, the whole bit or whatever it was. 
that she was totally healed, totally healed. And all I did, I did. It wasn't me, it was God. But I only did this. I prophesied life. I said, life, life, blessing. You will live and not die. Life and blessing. I am here to tell you something. There is life and death and the power of the tongue. Yes. And God wants us to move in a life giving, yes. creating and sustaining a life giving prophetic culture. Yes. And that woman ended up becoming a symbol of what God did in that entire church, because that wow. church ended up rising out of the ashes and became an authentic apostolic hub for New England. And she got healed and it became an amazing testimony. For okay. Jesus sake. So even right now, I know God cares about the details of your life. Yeah. I have three different um, things that I feel like the Lord has spoken to me about. I, f I saw like an injection, like a needle going in right wow. here, and there's a Botox that went wrong. It's mm. Very odd. A woman, like there's a woman, and it's almost like you don't feel here anymore. I don't even know how these things work. So in the name of Jesus, <sighs> there's going to be a feeling that comes back. We prophesy life into your <sighs> face, Gosh, and it's awesome. actually a restoration of your identity. In the name of Jesus, I also felt um, heat on my right ear. And so I speak to that right ear to open up in the name of Jesus. We speak for you to hear right now. And then there's a stomach fungus, wow. um, a bacteria. And we speak for a cleansing right now. We speak life into your intestines, into your digestive system right now. Every single one of us, we speak life into your body. We speak life into you right now in the name of Jesus. And I uh, the, the, these issues about COVID, mm -hmm. people who have lost yes, the yes, sense yes. of smell and the sense of taste. I speak right now that your sense of smell is returning right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I speak to the sense of taste. Mm -hmm. You're going to taste and see that the Come Lord on. is good. And your sniffer is going to work. Yes. And your taste buds are getting reactivated yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And these things about COVID, I curse mm -hmm. those after effects of COVID and reactivate yes. your senses of sense and smell and taste right now in Jesus' name. Yes, we just speak the life we speak of life. Jesus because Jesus came to save our lives. Yeah. He came to save your life because He cares for you and so much. Speak about Jesus right now in closing. Jesus is our winner. He is yeah. our hero. He's our he champion. is our champion. He's my best friend. I'm so sorry because I touched my mic, <laughs> but you know, He's our best friend and He cares for you and he came to save just you just you he came for you he cares about you so even now I speak life into your spirit to be a real open gift. your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ right, right now, now because he has given his all for you so you give your all for him hey thanks for joining us on Seeking Insight with James and Rachel, where <laughs> together yep. we're running after our friend Jesus, and we want you to run after him. Yes. Too. Come on.